a wise old man who knew a great deal about people, <clears throat> arrived at a strange new village. The old man had traveled all over the world. He had seen many distant lands, but he had never seen anything like this. In this town, all the people were carrying what seemed to be great burdens on their backs. They couldn't look around very well, and they never looked up because of the heavy burdens they carried. The old man was puzzled. He waved and gestured and finally caught the attention of a young man carrying an extraordinarily large bundle on his back. He asked the young man, my good man, I'm a stranger to your land and am fa fascinated by these large bundles you all carry about but never seem to put down. What is their purpose? Oh, these? These are my grudges. The wise old man was surprised. My, said the wise old man, that's a lot of grudges to collect at your age. Oh, well, they're not all mine. A lot of them just get passed down through my family. <laughs> that person over there, his great-great-grandfather called my great-great-grandfather a horse thief when they were both running for mayor. The wise man looked around and shook his head sadly. You all look so unhappy, he said to the people of the town. <clears throat> Is there no way to get rid of these burdens? Well, truthfully, we've, we've forgotten how. See, at first, we were, we were really proud of them. We wanted to compete to see who could carry the most grudges on their back. <laughs> it was a feat of strength. Um, but and people would come from miles away to take pictures of us, but I think people didn't enjoy coming to Grudgeville that much, and so they sort of stopped coming, and, and over the years we forgot how to, uh, how to take off the load. The wise man spoke, saying, If you really want to get rid of those grudges, I think I know five magic words that will do the trick. Really? That sounds great. I'm going to go uh, get the mayor and call together a town meeting because I think that we could definitely stand to uh, get rid of these grudges. Off the young man went, as fast as his grudges would let him. The young man told the mayor, and the mayor lost no time in calling the people to the village square. The mayor and the wise old man stood on a platform where they could see all the hunched over villagers. When the people had quieted down, the mayor said, Good people of Grudgeville, a wonderful thing has happened. A very wise stranger has come into our town. He says that he can tell us the five magic words that will rid us of these grudges we have carried for generations. How many of you would like to be able to straighten up and have your grudges disappear? Look at the world in a whole new way. Listen to the wise words of our visitor then and do as he tells you. That's okay. Then the wise stranger spoke. <clears throat> My friends, these are simple words, yet some people find them hard to say. I think you have the courage to speak them. The trick is that you must say them to each other and truly mean them. The first two words are, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The other three are, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Now, now that you've said those words to each other, there was a long pause, then a low grumble from the townspeople. First one person, then another said the words. Soon they were all saying them to each other, quietly at first, then louder. And would you believe it? Just like the wise man predicted, the grudges disappeared. What joy there was in the town. People were heard saying, look how those trees have grown. And is that you, Jim? How good to see your face. There was dancing in the streets that day, and it wasn't long before the mayor changed the name of the town to Joy Town. So this one time, 
True story. This one time I went to guest preach at a Unitarian Universalist congregation that was some miles away from the, the church where I was serving. When I got there, I was announced during the service as the guest minister from, from where I was from, and I delivered my sermon, and in the receiving line afterwards, someone came up to me and said, is, is so-and-so still, still involved over where you're the minister? Oh, yes, he is, I said. Well, I'm still mad at him. <laughs> he went on to tell me the hurtful thing that that person had done to him. And he also told me that it happened 25 years ago, which seems like an awfully long time to carry around that madness. Have you ever had a perfect one-liner come into your brain at exactly the right moment? You know, I'm not talking about like days afterwards where you think what you wish you had said, but, but the perfect one-liner, well, I did at that moment, and, and I thought better of saying it, which was probably a good idea, because that person obviously would still be mad at me for saying it, I think. But here's what I felt tempted to say. I'm sure glad that your religion teaches you about forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, it's probably good I didn't say that. But religion is supposed to teach us about forgiveness, right? It's supposed to counsel us, teach us, encourage us in the practice of forgiveness. It's supposed to help us towards what uh, in Judaism is called teshuvah, or turning, that turning of Yom Kippur, that turning, atoning, making right what has been made wrong. When we talk about forgiveness, oftentimes someone will bring up a question, wondering about whether there are any exceptions. They will think of the most horrible, most awful thing that they can imagine the most heartbreaking thing that they can think of, and they will ask, so are you saying we should forgive that? Are you saying we should forgive that horrible, awful thing? Does forgiveness have any limits? And if I'm being honest in my reply, I'd have to say, maybe. Maybe it does. Or maybe not. But if we can explore forgiveness in its most extreme cases, what excuses do we have for not being quicker to forgive the not-so-awful day-to-day stuff that many of us carry as burdens? The thoughtless word, the moment of self-centeredness, the honest mistake. Who says we need to start at the expert level when it comes to forgiveness? Maybe what's needed is not so much the coaching in the kind of Olympic level forgiveness, but rather the basic jog around the block level of forgiveness. Maybe we can start as beginners, and who knows where we'll work our ways up to. Why should we forgive? I think that one of the most important reasons why we should forgive is that we should forgive for our own sake. When we carry grudges, we can become like those citizens of Grudgeville. At first, the, the grievances may make us feel special, like we're particularly strong and mighty and righteous for carrying all these grudges around. Look at the size of the grudges I'm carrying. But it turns out that most people don't want to come visit Grudgeville. They may come out of curiosity once or twice, but I don't think people want to move there. We should forgive for our own sake, because our ability to forgive will make us happier and healthier and better able to join the dance of community, the dance where toes will get stepped on and people will bump into each other and feelings will get hurt, and that'll happen more or less all the time. But the more readily and more easily that we can forgive, 
the healthier and happier we'll be, the better able to join back into the dance rather than sitting it out. We should also forgive because we would want to be forgiven ourselves when we cause offense, wouldn't we? Forgiveness is like an extension of the golden rule. You've heard it said, treat others as you would want to be treated. Well, I would say also, forgive others as you would want to be forgiven. This morning, the day after Yom Kippur, as our neighbors uh, across the way have celebrated the Day of Atonement, this morning and the day after uh, people of the Jewish faith from around the world have contemplated atonement and turning and forgiveness. I'm glad that we're here doing the same. And may we take this message of forgiveness with us.